The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Bellingham, Washington on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35286. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting on the angled portion of the bumper extension, you'll find emergency warning lights. Located on the passenger side notch of the bumper, you'll find a front inlet. Moving toward the center, dual air horns, and directly in the center you'll find your electronic siren PA speaker. As we move upward onto the bumper extension, you'll find a tubbed storage location in the center, dry deck material, and Velcro tie-downs. Moving to the frame rails, you'll find two upright tow hooks. Moving over to the driver's side, an additional tubbed storage location, dry deck material, and Velcro tie downs. Moving to the outside edge of the bumper extension, front discharge. As we move up onto the cab, marker turn indicator and headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. Moving just above that, you'll find emergency warning lights. As we move to the windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless one piece windshield. Moving to the outer edge, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. As we move over the front section of the window, you'll find a downward facing convex mirror. Five running lights across the brow and a forward facing floodlight. As we move up onto the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Nestled inside the center portion of the light bar is where you'll find your Opticom. Let's take a look at some close ups of those items we just talked about. First, the front bumper extension and then a view of the tubbed storage location, dry deck material inside, and also Velcro tie downs. Let's move around to the front section of the cab on the driver's side. We'll start first on the angle, emergency warning light. As we move to the bumper extension side, you'll also find a side facing emergency warning light. Just beneath the front bumper area, you'll find the drain for that front discharge. And then as we move upward into the uh, cab area, step, you'll find air inlet. Moving down to the front axle, you'll find a sight gauge located in the center, Alcoa rims, and then Michelin tires. Moving up to the door handle, you'll find these are easily accessible with a gloved hand and also keyed. Grab handles located at points of entry. Directly over the front axle, you'll find a shoreline inlet, and right next to that, you'll find a cab side-facing emergency warning light. As we move directly over the driver's seat, you'll find a side-facing floodlight. Moving toward the back of the cab wall, you'll find a water tank level indicator. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. First, shoreline inlet, 20 amp, and then also your Michelin tires, Alcoa wheel, and sight gauge. Let's move now into the cab area, driver's space. We'll first start with the door panel, identifying a few safety and warning information placards. You'll also find your door lock and latch and electric windows grab handle. Down at the base section of the step, you'll find your air inlet and also air outlet and control. At the base of the seat, you'll find your auto charger. When plugged into shoreline power, this will become active. You'll also find a yellow placard. We'll go over that placard in just a few moments and then also comfort controls for the operator, air inflated seat, and also front to rear extender. As we move to the uh, yellow manufactured by Pierce for the city of Bellingham placard, it has the five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, all of the components, fluid capacities, and fluid type. As we move to the floor, you'll find your mechanical siren foot pedal, brake treadle and accelerator. As we move up to about the left knee of the operator, let's start first with the master battery switch. It is the red quarter turn master battery switch. Right next to it, you'll find tech module and also the engine 
ABS diagnostic ports. As we move downward, we'll find a few indicators and also switches. Let's first start with ABS diagnostic switch, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. You'll also find a display port. Moving to the opposite side of the steering column, you'll find cab locks not engaged, mirror heat, load manager. When any of these switches are engaged, you'll find a green LED light illuminating around it. Let's move to the steering wheel now, where you'll find controls on the right and left side, including air horn and emergency lights and windshield wipers. You'll also find the truck horn, and also your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system airbag located with inside the steering wheel. Let's move to the dash now. We'll start on the left-hand side of the dash with the ignition and start switch. Just inside of that location, switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. This will engage or disengage all emergency lights. Headlights and panel switch allow you to brighten lights within preview of the operator. On the opposite side of the column, OK to engage the high idle switch and indicator. Up in the dash cluster, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. On the left, you'll find the transmission, oil pressure, DEF level, and water temp. On the right, you'll find front and rear air, volts, and fuel, tachometer and speedometer in the center, diagnostic engine information displays above the speedometer. General view as we look to the right in the operator's position, let's start at the very top with your command zone. Tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips can use a glove hand or touch screen. Please see the owner's manual for more information. You'll also find windshield wiper control, rotate for speed, and push for deploying of windshield wiper fluid. As we move down, you'll find the engine brake on and off, setting for low, medium, and high, auto start, tire change, diff lock, and low intensity. Let's move just to the right and downward, where you'll find your yellow diamond, which is the pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. As we move down, you'll find flat mirror and convex mirror controls. And on the right, you'll find your Allison transmission pad, push button, digital readout with an informational note to pump and drive. Moving just to the right of this location, you'll find climate control, heat and defrost, and air conditioning. Let's look directly overhead of the operator's seat where you'll find this yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet, 0 inches, length, 30 feet, 5 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 42,000 pounds. You'll also find emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and opticom controls. To the right, additional switch panel housing the front flood, driver side and passenger side flood, rear flood, rear flash, driver's alley, passenger alley, and the backup alarm override. Let's move further to the right to the next module. Traffic advisor, siren control module and PA speaker system. Located in the center, you'll find do not move your apparatus when this light is on, indicating a door or compartment may be open. General view here to the rear, there are two forward-facing seats, full down, and a center EMS compartment. As we move to the rear section of the cab, you'll find a fix to the door panel, all of our safety and warning information placard, also electric windows, door lock and latch, and grab handle. Looking overhead, you'll find additional compartments. Those compartments do have LED lights inside them. Let's move down to the very base rear section of the engine where you'll find an additional door gaining access to the rear portion of the engine for your daily checks, oil, and transmission. General view here of the rear section, once again, fold down seats in the rear and also an EMS compartment located in the center. Netting located in the very front section and also adjustable shelves and LED lighting. Let's move exterior now. We'll start first at the pump panel area in the upper left-hand corner. D-handle gains us access into this space. As we move to the right, you'll find your booster line or red line located here. Now down onto the pump panel, you'll find a warning regarding entanglement hazard. Because the line's coming from the cross lay, there is the possibility of entanglement. Also, you'll find your recirculating line. This is a twist, not a pull. And as we move to the right, you'll find vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They are currently plugged and are for testing purposes. Just beneath that, you'll find the pump intake and pump discharge. These are the master gauges. In the upper right, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule. 
for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left, the associated GPM, and on the right, the associated RPM at test pressure. You do have a panel light and also an OK to pump indicator along with the switch panel. Green indicating OK to pump. All operations have been completed with inside the cab area. As we move down to the discharges, you'll find an electric valve for your front inlet. Also, you'll find discharges color-coded and labeled. As we move down, additional discharges and also two electric valves. The two electric valves are the passenger side discharge and then also your master stream discharge. To the right, intake relief valve, instructions on the front placard. Also, thermal relief valve located with a visual and also audible alarm. The outer edge of that audible alarm bezel does allow you to dampen or brighten the sound. Let's move downward from this point on the pump panel. We'll talk about a few more items. First, the tank fill recirculating line. As we move just underneath that, you'll find an audible alarm also. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen the sound also. As we move all the way to the very far right, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. With inside that pressure throttle governor, you'll find the blue module. This is your water tank level LED indicator. Moving just to the right, you'll find an LED indicator for the driver main inlet and also a wheel valve. To the right, tank to pump. As we move downward, you'll find your large diameter pump inlet. There's also a pan door located on the right hand side. A lift and turn latch will gain you access behind the pump panel. Let's move to the very bottom section of the pump panel. We'll first start at the very top with a warning sticker. Only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after proper training. You'll also find a pressure hazard warning. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move to the left, you'll find all of our color-coded discharge drains. And then just to the right, you'll find the driver's side auxiliary inlet. This is a ball valve and it is also a female coupling. Moving all the way to the right, the minimum operation maintenance schedule. Let's move just to the right where you'll find this placard at the very top, which is your watchress placard. It's indicating the type of pump and also transmission model. As we move further down, you'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. And then moving to the right, you'll find your pump drain. And beneath that, the manual pump shift. As we move just underneath the running board, you'll find a foot pedal switch. This will be your reel rewind. Just for a better image location, you'll find directly under the pump panel is the real rewind foot pedal switch. And then just to the right, you'll find the folding wheel chalk in front of the axle. As we move into the compartment at the very bottom section, you'll find a pull-out tray. The release mechanism is going to be on the lower right, and it will lock in the outward position. Two SCBA storage compartments with retaining strats, one in front of and rear of the axle. Def level fill location, blue cap with an indicator. 4.5 US gallon tank. As we move to the next compartment to the rear of the axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage location for two bottles and also the silver ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. General view, let's look to the rear of the axle. Just underneath that, you'll find folding wheel chalk. And as we move upward into the rear compartment, you'll find adjustable shelves and also two SCBA holders. All of the compartments currently open. Let's move now to the rear section of the apparatus. As we start with the rear section of the apparatus, we'll identify a few items within this area. Let's first start in the upper left and right corners with two pan doors located in the uppermost section. Also, ladder storage location with a pan door. This is the upper left-hand compartment. As we move downward, you'll find two cupped switches. First is the rear floodlight and then also hose bed lights. At the very uppermost portion of the hose bed area, you'll also find backboard storage. As we move across the back, you'll find four discharges in the very rear section, color-coded and labeled. As we move toward the center, you'll find your backup camera, which is recessed. Also, some warning information here regarding entanglement hazard. Be cautious because of those lines are coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. Also, we have some additional warning here regarding pressure hazard. Also, fall, do not ride on the vehicle, and if you're climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle. Let's move down to the bottom. Left and right side, you'll find a common bezel housing emergency light, brake light, turn light, 
and reverse light. Also fold down steps as we mentioned previously. In the very center you'll find a pull out tray. The release mechanism is on the right and when it's fully extended it will lock into position requiring you to push the release mechanism. Let's move back up to the upper right hand corner of the vehicle. Additional storage, LED lighting, dry deck material. As we move to the rear section you'll find 24 foot extension and a 14 foot roof additional long handled tool storage. We're now around to the passenger side of the vehicle with all the compartments in the open position. Let's start in the rear. We have two trays here, adjustable LED lighting and dry deck material. As we move to the middle section, you'll find SCBA storage location, front and rear of the axle. Once again, Michelin tires, Alcoa wheels. As we move to the exhaust, I would like to point out extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures. Be cautious when in regen mode and where you park your vehicle. Also underneath, you'll find your tire chains. Moving forward to this location, you'll find an additional storage compartment, LED lighting, and also adjustable shelving. As we move to the pump panel area, let's move all the way up to the very top section. This is a cutout here with rollers to allow your booster line to be deployed through this area. As we move to the right hand side, you'll find storage location for your cross lay. D handle gains access into this. We also have two warning labels on this side. First, entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. And then also fall. Always face the vehicle when climbing onto the vehicle. As we move down to the lower right, you'll find your cab lift controls. A caution here. Check plumbing and steps on back of cab before raising cab. Also your lift instructions on the placard to raise and to lower. We also have an additional warning regarding pressure hazard. Once again, caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. To the left, you'll find the Pierce logo American flag eagle, large diameter pump inlet. Just to the right, you'll find your large diameter discharge. And then further to the right, you'll find a two and a half inch discharge. As we move downward, you'll find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. And then just to the right, an additional access door. This is where you'll gain entry into this compartment for the override for your large diameter passenger side discharge. As we move down, once again, all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's take a look inside the pan door where you'll find the override. Let's move downward from this location under the running board area where you'll find two items. First, front inlet drain and also the foot pedal for the reel rewind. Let's go ahead and move now inside the cab area at the rear section cab door. First affixed to the door panel, we're going to find all of our safety and warning information. Also door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. As we look overhead inside the cab, you'll find push on or off red or white lens and also your intercom system. Once again, you have two forward facing seats. In between the two forward facing seats, an additional EMS compartment with storage over the passenger and driver side forward section. Let's move exterior now. We'll move into the officer space. Let's first start with the officer space uh, on the front step area is where you'll find the front inlet drain. As we move inside to the door panel, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning information, door lock and latch, grab handle, window control. Let's move inside of the officer space. A pillar, front section of the windshield, you'll find your parking brake. You'll also find your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, an airbag. There's also a warning indicator not to mount any equipment within this area. On the right hand side, a pillar, you'll also find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. Let's move to the front section of the dash area, just to the right side where you'll find your parking brake. Moving now just to the left, you'll find an air horn and also 12 volt access. This happens to be USB style. Overhead, you'll find push on or off white or red lenses. Let's move to the components within the overhead section of the dash. First with your Firecom module. As we move to the right and slightly underneath, you'll find the Firecom wireless base station. You also have some switches located in this area. Front flood, driver's side flood, passenger side flood, rear flood, driver's alley, siren brake, and also passenger alley. 
Let's move outside now and go on top of the cab area. Let's first start with some safety and warning information placards. These are located on the right and left side of the cab area near the grab handles. This is a non-walking surface. As we move to the cab dunnage area, which is directly behind the cab, this is where you'll find your booster line. This has a manual rewind location and also tension free spool knob. As we move to the rear section of the cab dunnage area, you'll find a cover plate. This cover plate houses the electric valve control for your master stream device. We'll take a general look here of the dunnage area master stream device. You can see it does have a telescoping master stream. Quick view here of the booster line. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear section of the apparatus, an additional dunnage area. This is going to be top fill location for your water tank. There is also side compartments, LED lighting, and also dry deck material on both passenger and driver's side. Let's go ahead and move now to the hose bed cover. This will withstand the weight of a firefighter. Also has yellow diamonds around the exterior indicating the edge of the walking surface. Here is a quick video of your apparatus, Bellingham. Congratulations to you. If you have any questions about your fire apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.